The next, my presentation is about the history of our uh, ideology. Uh, they, you see that all religious born, born in East. All religious comes, came from East. But West is developing very well all religious and all knowledge. It's very bi big uh, uh, um, prevalence of Western approach. In Russia, we always see to the, uh, on the earth as a big biochemical uh, puzzle picture where there are a lot of biochemical provinces which influence on the body content and on our health. Uh, in Russia, also, it founded the, such uh, uh, science, life science as microelementosis, the science which says that all chronic diseases, uh, all chronic diseases or states of sickness are connected with, with stress element deficiencies. You can see this microelementosis theory. There, we, there are three groups of microelementosis, natural, technogenic, and iatrogenic. Very important that in Western countries, developed countries, more presented iatrogenic hyper and hypo elementosis because of using a lot of medicines not always in the right way. So iatrogenic elementosis uh, we can found in 30% in Western countries. In developing countries where people are taking less, less medical uh, drugs and less uh, substances, we, we see less cases of iatrogenic, iatrogenic microelementosis. Why I can say this? Because I am presenting Trace Element Institute for UNESCO, which is working in 28 countries, and we know in different countries the statistics on trace elements. So, next, bioelementology. We uh, offered for the better understanding of uh, influence of trace elements and other elements for the, uh, our nature, the concept of bioelementology. Bioelementology, uh, this is a uh, new concept which explain how, how trace elements and uh, others blocks of life are connected with other sciences. So it's a sample example of integrative approach. It's our proposal. You can use it or not use, but we think that it is right and we use this approach in our medical uh, medical working what is bio element it's block of life it's not only atom of element it's an ensemble of uh, atom and some organic molecules which play role play uh, uh, different games in our in our body for example this was an excellent lecture about vitamin c vitamin c is not only working as only vitamin c Ascorbate contacted with different elements, so we also can see the interrelationships between these blocks of life. Another, you can see our classifications of bioelements or blocks of life. Not only elements, but also simple molecules which are, which are uh, essential for the life. What is bioelements? Uh, they are not beans. Beans started from the cell. Bioelements are substances, yet substances, which can be used for the building of the life. If we understand how life is, was built, we understand how to treat. Because the illness often, very often started from, the, from the, uh, some minimal deviations in physical, chemical, uh, substances in our body. So, if we have political, some uh, problems with the trace elements, 
With the bio elements, we have problems also political because there's a bio resources. One nation needs more than another nation. One nation uh, used more than another nation, and it is interesting for them. So I don't want to say more about this. Only I want to say our approach when we start to work in any country, what we are doing. We are investigating the reference range of the data in blood and hair and others that to see what is normal for these people living in this territory, what is typical for them that to don't make misdiagnosis, not to make the mistake when we make the mis uh, diagnosis. For example, in Taiwan, uh, a lot of people have mercury high. A lot of people, 60% six, of the population has an elevated hair mercury. But it is not danger for absolute majority of them because selenium level as antagonist of mercury is also high. So the, there are no imbalance in the body of Taiwanese residents. If we see high mercury and low selenium, we say that it can start the disease in this patient. If no, no. And this is a uh, road also in Minamata uh, Convention, which was uh, accepted a few years ago. When you have elevation, moderate elevation of mercury without deficiency of antioxidants, it's no disease. It's only accumulation which you can use because you are living here, genetically you are predisposed to this, you are adapted to this food, to this environment, and this is no illness. So, next. Well, our approach is based in ICPMS, using of ICPMS. Uh, what we can find? We find that in Russia, selenium, we found selenium in 24-45% of the population. Zinc in 18, 46% of the population, depending from the region. So Russia con consists from 80 regions. In different regions, different deficiencies. Cobalt is most deficient in Russian population. I want to say, for, in comparison to Taiwan, your neighbors, Taiwan has only 5-7% of deficient, selenium deficient patients when we say, uh, say about hair analysis. Only five or seven, between five, seven, no more. Russia, 45. So in Russia, it's a problem. In Taiwan, so only in some people, or ill people, or people with some troubles. Zinc deficiency is more widespread in India, Bangladesh, but not in Russia, and so on. So it's example, we made the mapping of the Russia, and we have the maps for each region and we know which element is high or low in people living in the region. It's very good correlated with demographic data. It's these formulas possibly are not very easy, but you can see that if people have low magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, copper, or high manganese mercury, they, in this territory, mortality is higher than in others. So it's in this territory we can find more connections with these diseases and we need to produce in this territory the special medicines or special foods, special uh, diets, for elimination of toxic substances or for substitution of deficiencies. The same is birth rate. In countries where zinc is high, normal sodium, iron, aluminum, silicium, we can find zinc, attention for the zinc. Zinc is stimulating spermatogenesis. In these regions, we see more birth rate higher birth rate. So in this picture, we can demonstrate that it is connection between trace element status of individual persons and population and demographic data. 
I think this is very important. You can see about uh, hair analysis correlation with the different different diseases. You can see in Russian 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 population if region in region people have low calcium, cobalt, potassium, magnesium, sodium, and phosphorus. This is a regions with a very high score of cardiovascular diseases. It's not new from the physiology of biochemistry, but we know that this region needs more attention for these elements. We need to produce here new fertilizers for agriculture, new products for human, uh, for humans, for the citizens, and new medicines, and so on. So it's also political interest in political uh, 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 impact of this because health standard demography is also policy politics so it's demonstration from our book published in Springer Verlag about the selenium and the mercury I said that if selenium is low mercury is high you can see how much Uh, how much significant changes we can see in the patients. So, if in region or some country or in some person we see imbalance of selenium mercury, very important for this region. I think for Philippines more than for Taiwan because of uh, environmental problem and metal pollution and so on. But I'm not sure now. In few years I will say more more uh, precisely. But you see that it is a lot of connection between imbalance between toxic element and its antagonist. So if we see this, we give not only multi-element formula, we can use only selenium if you see only selenium deficiency. It's enough that to cure, that to help, that to prevent. Silk Road, it's a big program uh, from the Chinese government and uh, we proposed this program of investigation of Silk Road countries for Silk Roads. Then you can see we are working in different countries. We present our services for what? That to improve the, uh, improve the health of people, of people in different countries and to investigate how we can help more effectively for these people. So our approach is before investigate, know the special, special uh, predispositions in this population and of only after that start aggressive marketing, selling and so on because you can make mistake. No, you know that all substances, vitamin, even vitamins or trace elements are toxic in overdosage, can be toxic, and in deficiency. You need, uh, you have to be uh, sure that you do good. Of course, in cancer, big mega doses of vitamin C or selenium, it's good idea because it's uh, less, uh, uh, less deranged, deranging than chemotherapy or radiotherapy, and sometimes or oftenly, I don't know this, I'm not specialist in using of mega doses of vitamin C or selenium or others, uh, but more, sometimes are more effective in the uh, treatment of cancer patients. And this is why I am very thankful for American friends, which present very good lectures about this. In Russia, we not use such big dosage, but why not? We need to do this, but only in hospitals, in clinics, not not as an experiment, self-experiment in the uh, people. So we have the good support from different countries. Also, we wo work with some American universities. Why we, are, we have the, so much partners? Because in different countries, there are different schools of knowledge, different approaches, and we want to integrate these knowledges in the right way, best way, for each country, for each group of population.